Welcome to this Computer Science Labs presentation introducing our Microsoft SQL database recovery application. This utilizes a new technique of file defragmentation to recover SQL database files. There are three types of files associated with MS SQL databases. The database data is stored in a primary data file with the extension .mdf and a secondary data file .ndf. The MDF is the critical file that contains both the system databases and user database data. The secondary data file is used to store optional metadata. There is also a log file with a file extension of .ldf, but loss of this file does not affect the readability or integrity of the database data file. Because the MDF file is the most critical, it is useful to examine its data structure. MDF files store data in a page format. A page is the minimum storable unit in an SQL database file. A page will occupy an integer multiple of sectors and each page will have a unique page ID. The pages are ordered sequentially within the MDF file. The page size of an MDF file is 8 kilobytes or 16 sectors. In a file system, a cluster is the smallest logical amount of disk space that can be allocated to contain a file. Typical cluster sizes range from one sector, 512 bytes, to 128 sectors, 64 kilobytes. So, if the cluster size is one sector, then the MDF page size is 16 clusters, and so on until if the cluster size is 16 sectors, then the MDF page will occupy a single cluster. Files in a file system are managed in units called clusters. When a file system is created, there is free space to store file blocks together contiguously. This allows for rapid sequential file reads and writes. However, as files are added, removed or changed in size, the free space becomes externally fragmented, leaving only small gaps in which to place new data. When a new file is written, or when an existing file is extended, the new data blocks are correspondingly scattered. This is called file system fragmentation. This example shows an MDF file having four pages or 32 kilobytes. Below is shown the storage space allocation map. The blue and green clusters have been allocated to existing files, leaving some clusters empty. When this MDF file is saved, the file management system will put the first two pages in the first two empty clusters and the last two pages in the next available clusters. Thus the file becomes fragmented and scattered into discrete blocks or sections. Another situation which may arise is where the page size is larger than the cluster size employed by the file system. Here the file management system will divide up both the file and pages into sections, each section fitting within a cluster. For example, if the cluster size is 4 kilobytes, each page will be equally divided and put into empty clusters one by one. Other recent applications have employed what is known as header-based file recovery. An example of this process is shown here. To recover the four-page MDF file shown, the header-based file recovery application will search for the MDF file header and expecting that the four pages will follow on directly from the header, put the four continuous clusters starting from the header cluster into new MDF file as shown. This will contain only the first two pages, as pages 3 and 4 had been fragmented to other cluster positions, thus making the file incomplete. This clip illustrates a real case study. This is a 3.4 gig image file taken from a hard drive. The hard drive contains several database files, however they were accidentally deleted by the users. The database file that the customer needs to recover is a Microsoft SQL 2005 database file with a size of 1.2 gig, and a name ending in NJD. Firstly, an application such as RStudio, or any other conventional recovery application, would be used to examine the drive. There is a direct NTFS volume on the hard drive. Opening the volume, we find that there are a couple of system volume files and some metadata files, but not the .mdf files needed. Thus it will be necessary to carry out a deep scan to find all the lost files. The scan is completed and extra files have been found. The software has found some Microsoft SQL.mdf files, 
and one of them has a size of around 1.2 gig which matches the size specified by the customer. We can't identify the database using file names because header-based file recovery does not recognize original file names. The file is highlighted for recovery onto a local disk. To check the integrity of the recovered.mdf file we need to try and attach it using Microsoft SQL Server. To attach an MDF file without an LDF it is necessary to create a new database with the same name as the original. The server program is then stopped. It can be seen that the database is in a suspect mode. New MDF and LDF files have been created under the SQL data folder. The LDF file can be deleted and the new MDF replaced by the recovered MDF file, renamed with the original database file name. A set of SQL scripts are then run to bring the database into emergency mode. However, when the table is clicked on, an error message appears indicating that the page ID is wrong. The database is corrupted and it is therefore not mountable. The next step would have been to use some conventional SQL recovery software. This software has attempted to repair the tables and export them back to a new SQL database. This was carried out, but on checking the table with the customer, they reported that there was a large amount of content missing from within the table. This indicates that though the table structure is good, most of the actual content inside the table is missing. The missing content is a result of file fragmentation. This is why instead of using a header-based recovery, Computer Science Labs has implement, implemented a new technique to retrieve such fragmented files. Rather than losing fragments when the data is rearranged, the CSL MDF defragmentation technique will collect each fragment belonging to the file and reassemble them back into their correct arrangement. In this example, in order to achieve MDF defragmentation, the customer will first use the CSL SQL fragment scanning application to collect all the database fragments from their hard drive or image file. The source device is selected and a file name specified where the fragments are to be saved to. Scanning time will depend on the capacity of the source device. The resultant file will have the same file size as the total size of all the SQL databases stored on the device. As long as the file size is equal to or larger than the specific database to recovered, then there is a very good chance of recovering all the content of the original database. The scan result is encrypted. This will ensure the data security is not compromised during the transfer to CSL. It is also recommended that the file is compressed before being sent. In this case the file has been compressed down from 1.6 gig to 400 megabytes. The resultant file can either be sent to us by, F by FTP or if it is too big to be sent through the internet it can be put onto a CD or DVD, a USB pen drive or even a hard disk drive for mailing to us. Once we receive the file, it will be decrypted and the fragment analysis initiated to recover the database files. Eight sections of fragments have been found and these have been shown to come from five different databases. One of these databases is that required by the customer. After further analysis, it has been found that fragments 4, 5, 1 and 6 belong to the database required and that fragment 4 is the first fragment. Totaling the size of all the fragment sections would indicate a database size of approximately 1.2 gig which matches the size specified by the customer. Next CSL used the defragmentation technique to reassemble the individual fragments into a working and attachable MDF file. There is no need to run any other software to repair the MDF file recovered by the SQL defragmentation technique. The same procedure as previously detailed was used to mount the MDF without an LDF. This slide shows the considerable increase in the recovered database content that use of the defragmentation technique has brought about. The content was checked with the customer and found to be complete to their full satisfaction. A further illustration of the benefits of the CSL defragmentation technique against that of header-based recovery comes from analysing the results using a hex viewer. It can be seen that many of the sectors in the lower file, which results from conventional header-based recovery, contains only zeros. Comparing this with the same sectors recovered using the defragmentation technique shows the original data that would otherwise be lost to fragmentation. In comparing the two types of recovery, CSL's defragmentation technique does not rely on unfragmented files or file headers alone. 
It collects the full set of fragments available from a physical device, even where these may have been deleted, utilising the comprehensive MDF ID set. In conclusion, the technique offers an unrivaled range of benefits. It recovers from the physical level of the device. It collects every fragment or fragment section available from all the databases present. It identifies which fragment belongs to which database. It then correctly reassembles the fragments and rebuilds them into an immediately mountable database without the need for further repair. The techniques can be applied to a wide range of database recovery scenarios, such as inadvertently deleted databases, retrieval of missing database content, recovery of corrupted or lost databases, recovery from damaged database backup files, and recovery of .ndf files if needed. Thank you for viewing this Computer Science Labs presentation. If you require any further information about the file defragmation technique, or any other CSL products or services, please contact us via any of the channels shown. Thank you, and goodbye.